In this video, I'm going to look at the three main methods of subtraction strategies that I teach to my students. I'd be really interested to know what you think of them, particularly the one in the middle, as it's my favourite one to use, but probably understand uh, entails the most understanding. All right, the first one that we all know is the borrowing method or the column method where pupils borrow, obviously they're not actually borrowing, when they have the top number is smaller than the number beneath it. So for example, you've got 2,000, take 1,387. They, uh, zero can't take seven can't be done in this algorithm. Obviously can be done as minus seven, but not in this case. So you have to borrow, 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 borrow. So it goes to 2,000, has to be regrouped, becomes 10. Uh, I'm going to borrow another one, so that becomes 10, then nine, so I've borrowed another one. So it's obviously horrible already, but if you're neat, it's okay. So 10 take 7 is 3, 9 take 8 is 1, 9 take 3 is 6, and 1 take 1 is nothing, so 613. And you all know that one, so it didn't need, hopefully it doesn't need too much explanation. The one that I learned towards the end of, end of primary school and that I favour because I find it very quick and very neat because it's still in a column is to think I can't do 10 take 7, but if I rearrange this whole sum, if I balance it out or swap and I make the top line 10 greater by making this 10 in the units column, I have to balance it out by making the subtraction amount 10 greater as well. So now I've effectively got 2010, take away 1,387. So to balance it out, I have to make this 10 greater. I have to make it 1,397. So because I've added a 10 on here, I have to add a 10 on here. So just adding one more onto the tens column. I put it after the 8, just to help me keep track in my mind that it's 80 add 10 or 8 add 1 if I want to ignore the place value, not 18 in the way that I've thought of that as being a 10. So I do 10 take 7, that gives me 3. But now I've got nothing, take away 9 or take away 90. So I'm going to add a 100 to this column, so now it becomes 2,100, ignoring this bit here. Just I mean, when I'm actually doing it, I'm not thinking about these elements. I just know that these are true and make it work. So I've made this 100 greater. So what I've subtracted will have to be 100 greater as well to keep the equation balanced. So I'm going to add one onto the hundreds column. So instead of 300, it's now 400. So I do 10 take 9, because I've got my 8 at 1, or 100 take 90, if you prefer. And so we've got another 10 there for 100 take 90 gives us 10, or 10 take 9 gives us 1. Obviously, I can't do 0 take 4 in this case. So I'm going to, again, make that into a 1,000. And I'll make a 1,000 greater on the bottom, so balancing out the sum. 10 take 4 is 6, and 2 take two, because one add one is two, is nothing. So 613, just like the other one, so I know it's worked. And then finally, we've got the number line that most pupils learn in the earlier days of primary and then don't revisit, which is actually a shame because most pupils prefer it and involves counting on or counting forwards, which is a lot easier. So I've got 1387, and pupils will hopefully know their number bonds reasonably well. If they don't, they could do number bonds to 10 first, but I'll use number bonds to 100. So the nearest 100 is 1400. I'll have to count on 13 to get there. And now my nearest 1,000 is 2,000, and I have to count on 600 to get there. And thankfully, it's pretty trivial to add those together, and I get 613.